Hello, my name is Eric Downey and I am I work for Structural Soils and I'm an associate director for um, the company. Um, I've come from a contracting background and then I started in um, consulting and then I've now moved back into contracting. So that's my background and I will start. So Structural Soils um, is a ground investigation company and we were established in 1964 and we've been going strong ever since and in 2007 we were bought by RSK and from there we um, established a Scottish office and we've got a materials lab in Castleford um, and we've got a red lab in, also in Castleford and we've been awarded some quite prestigious uh, Ground investigations around the country, including HS2, um, Bradwell, Sizewell, and Wilbur. So, just a little flavour of our expanse of offices. Um, we've got eight offices in the country, um, stretching from Glasgow down to Plymouth, um, and Bristol is our head office. Uh, so, um, and we've got four UCAS accredited laboratories um, in Bristol, Hemel. Tonbridge and Castleford. And we have, as part of the RSK group, um, access to over 220 um, different types of drilling plants um, to hopefully um, meet your needs. Um, currently, we've got about 295 um, colleagues uh, within the company. Um, so again, we've got a huge variety of people to assist with your requirements. So, who do we work for? Uh, we work for a wide range of people. Um, so, how is England, HS2, uh, Thames Water, Network Rail, all of the large uh, government bodies. Um, we work in lots of different industries, um, all of them listed there, and lots of different environments. So, um, railway, over water, um, contaminated land, anywhere that you have a uh, requirement. So in order to do all our work, uh, we do have to um, comply with a number of different bodies and we also sign up to a lot of different um, auditors and independent auditors so you can be trusted, uh, or you can trust in the information that uh, we, we give to you guys. So um, that's that. So, Coming on to the main part of the um, presentation and um, why do we do this work? Well, what we don't want is anything in the pictures that you can see in front of you. Um, if you did turn up on site and see these pictures, uh, you need to stop work immediately. Um, health and safety is our number one priority for any of our works and we do not entertain uh, anybody in a uh, trial pit or anybody drilling with a drilling rig on a set of ramps like that. That is just uh, no go. So um, that is the first thing that uh, we need to make sure that this does never happen. If we get our job wrong or we don't understand the ground conditions, this is what can happen. Um, so our job is to hopefully mitigate um, any sort of um, issues like this, a bus falling into a swallow hole. Um, I did actually work um, on a project very similar to this on the A2 in Blackheath. Um, and it was actually, I was working for the consultant and Structural Souls actually did the ground investigation. And um, we, uh, it was all to do with uh, chalk um, solution features on the A2 going into Blackheath and uh, yeah it was quite a serious undertaking um, and yeah uh, we managed that very well. Um, just to sort of put this a little bit into context unfortunately our work is very much undervalued and typically we only um, have a budget of about 0.1 percent of the full contract value uh, for the build or the structure. So um, our job or my job is to try and educate our clients in that the more money that we can spend on ground investigation, 
the less risk the client will have later on during the process. So a lot of projects do overrun due to um, unforeseen ground conditions. And if a little bit more time and money was spent on the ground investigation, we would be able to remove those um, problems that we have. So what is a ground investigation? Um, we use a code of practice called the BS5930, and this latest version is 2015. Um, in a nutshell, we are uh, using the, the budget that we are given as economically as possible, and we are trying to identify all of the hazards that are within the ground at that site. Um, it's quite a hard job to, to do that, but that is uh, sort of our skill. So in uh, sort of summary on that side, we initially start with a desk study and we will have a look at the ground conditions of that site. We will make sure that um, we sort of design the ground investigation using the right plant to go to the right depth. Um, if the site has an aquifer, we make sure we look at the aquifer because there's no point investigating the site if it's potentially contaminated and not um, going into the aquifer um, to see if that has actually been contaminated. Or if there's old buildings, we need to identify where those old buildings were and see if they're still in situ or if they have been removed. So we need to look at old maps and um, design a ground investigation to suit. So what are the techniques that we've got at our disposal or in our toolbox? So what we do need to do is get it right first time. Um, so as I said, we start with a desk study. We then um, put the proposal together. We get agreement to undertake that work. Um, we do the ground investigation and then we report on it. But it's much better that we understand exactly what the ground conditions are before we start work. The structural soils have a GIS database that covers the country um, for all of our work that we've undertaken over our 50 years of um, business. And here you can see a sort of little picture of London and all of the sites that we've worked on in London. And we can identify each of the reports and we can zoom in on those reports and that is very useful for us when we're tendering for new work um, so that we can have a look at the ground conditions and any of the issues that we may have encountered on that particular site. Um, also we're able to warrant that information depending on the um, client and if the client is willing uh, and able to pass that uh, on to the new client. So geophysics is a very, very important tool um, that we use on some of our sites, not all of our sites, it's actually quite an expensive tool, um, but on a large site, it's actually very, very useful and economic. Um, so on this particular site, we have a number of different ground conditions. Um, we have sort of the, the area marked A on that plan, I don't know if you can see, but you've got these um, linear um, markings on there. And I know this is a recording, but um, one of the questions that I do normally ask are, what do you believe this um, section to be? And because um, I can't get any live feedback, well, this is actually a concrete slab. And again, potentially this may be slightly buried, underground, you may not, or overgrown with um, vegetation, may not be actually that visible, but again, with the, the um, geophysics, which is actually, um, they used on this particular site, I think it was EM61, they were able to identify very clearly where those um, um, concrete slab was. And also in the top left here, um, We've got these little circular structures. I don't know if anybody wants to hazard a guess what they are. Um, these are actually pile caps. So again, 
they may not be visible on the surface and they may have been sort of um, dug over and, and buried very shallowly within the ground to make it look as though it's all nice clean site. But again, with the geophysics on here, we're able to identify those. And again, you may be able to go back to your client or the, the vendor and say, hang on a sec, you've actually left a huge amount of um, structures left in the ground. We're gonna have to get rid of that and you may be able to um, negotiate down this, the, the price of that um, parcel of land. So again, you're working in the best interest of your client. Um, so these area of blue is uh, sort of um, a more natural ground. So again, you can um, remove some of the um, concentration in that area of your investigation. So really you wanna be concentrating your investigation around the pink areas, around these green areas, and uh, you can leave uh, or reduce some of the um, blue areas. These white areas we weren't able to investigate at the time. So what types of drilling activities um, can we do? Uh, this technique is called cable percussion drilling. It's been around since Roman times, um, slightly changed since the Roman times, obviously. We've now got a motor as opposed to either horse or humans lifting and um, dropping the weight, which is here. Um, this is uh, tried and tested and it's very robust. Um, it's very maneuverable in a nice open field. However, when you're working in a, in a city area, it's actually quite um, difficult to maneuver around because the uh, rig with the Land Rover is about seven meters long and it's actually quite hard to get into different places. Um, but this technique is really only used for sands, gravels, clays, um, and weak mudstones, um, and maybe some putty chalk. Once you start going into hard chalk, it's actually quite difficult to get through, um, but it's a very effective tool and it can get down up to 80 meters in the ground, in the right ground conditions. What Structural Soils have actually done is we've designed this, this um, item here called a whip bar, and this prevents the rope, which um, can come out of the housing, and actually um, it has in the past removed um, digits of people's fingers and thumbs. So again, quite a simple solution to a quite horrific and life-changing um, problem. Um, so we, we won a bit of an innovation award for that. Um, so moving on. Some of our lovely esteemed clients want us to get our rigs or our boreholes into some quite challenging locations. Um, this is a site in London, and we were asked to identify what was inside an ice house. And um, what happened here was initially, we actually came out with a full size rig because I asked for the dimensions of the bridge. And the dimensions of the bridge actually would assist or would allow for a proper full size rig, which obviously makes um, speed and um, speed through the ground a lot quicker. Uh, however, the, the client, unbeknown to me, wanted the borehole offset from the center and uh, to ensure that we went into that little ice house. And unfortunately for me, um, we had to go back to the office and to BR to bring out our cut down rig and come back to site. So this led this sort of miscommunication, which is very important in what we do, led to um, a delay on site and also additional cost and no one likes additional costs so it's important that we all communicate with our client just to understand exactly what they want from us on site so the next type of drilling that um, we utilize is called rotary drilling uh, most ground investigation track contractors have these multi-purpose Kamakio um, type rigs. This is actually a 205 that we're looking at. It's quite a small, compact rotary rig, but it can actually get through some overburden, which we would class as sands and clays and gravels. However, it doesn't like really dense gravels, and it's very. If we do have dense gravels. Unfortunately, it will struggle to get through, so we will have to use 
shell and auger or cable crushing um, drilling first, um, set some casing and then drill um, using the rotary rig. This rotary rig is actually on a floating pontoon. Um, so it's again, uh, relatively light. It's about, I think, two or three tons. Um, and we're able to float that over water. So the driller and the uh, second man uh, putting the, the drilling casing into the ground. You've actually got two types of drilling head. One is a prop hammer, and this drives the tubes into the ground. Um, and this is for the soft ground. And then when we get to the rock, we then flip over to the rotary head, and then we drill down with the rotary head. And your drill rods are here. And then once we get the core out of the ground, core goes in the boxes and then the engineer will look at that and um, undertake their um, sort of log and describe the, the rock features. So Structural Soils have also purchased um, two sonic rigs. Um, these are an, uh, actually called Rotosonic. Um, so they have the rotary head and a sonic head, so they're able to um, manage lots of different environments on the same site. So whereas I said with the, um, the Kamakio 205, it's got a crook hammer and it, it finds it very difficult to get through sands and gravels. However, with the sonic head, we're able to get through those um, sands and gravels efficiently and fast, and that's the most important thing. Um, for us on site, um, this would actually help uh, all of our uh, clients and we're able to, to get that uh, moving very quickly. So here's just a couple more shots of our rigs. These are relatively new to, the, to our fleet, so obviously we're very proud to, to show them off. Um, some of our clients want us to undertake rotary drilling in some quite extreme conditions. And the picture on the left is Queen Street Tunnel in Glasgow. Um, myself and a colleague and a few others uh, from different offices um, set up a hole um, 36 hours inside Queen Street Tunnel. And we were working um, for the full duration. So we did um, two shifts. We had um, but like we had to do a little trial shift to start and to make sure that the rig fitted. Um, and with uh, lots of help from our colleagues, we were able to get the rig into a location and undertake that work success successfully. Um, other times we're working in a much more restricted environment. And here we have a, a fume extraction system. Um, so we don't uh, pollute the atmosphere and uh, are able to work safely in that environment. Um, some of the other work um, that we are asked to do is sort of hydro testing, so testing the water and um, ground conditions within the in the in the uh, deep ground. Um, some of our systems uh, we're actually able to work on an inclined basis as well. So we um, did some it was an angle hole, and in order to put the packer central into the uh, hole, we uh, fitted a collar. And again, this was just slightly innovative um, to what normally happens. So we're able to meet the client's expectations. So again, we're very keen to hear your uh, requirements and we will do our best to, to, um, to get that work however you want it doing. Um, being part of a larger group, uh, we're able to use our colleagues, um, our sister company's resources within our um, requirements if, if it's needed. Um, so this is a Central Alliance uh, slope climbing rig. It's actually fitted with a CPT head on there. And these are uh, augered into the ground. And then we can run the CPT um, probe into the ground and get reliable ground conditions on some quite steep slopes. So these work on between 40 and 45 degrees. And this particular rig can probably drive to about 20 or 25 meters depth. There's actually, you can also put a rotary head on the front of here as well. So it's a very versatile rig and we can use it for CPTs or rotary. With window sampling, um, this is much more um, 
useful on a sort of contaminated land investigation. It's small, it's compact, um, and it doesn't make much mess. This was us actually working on a golf course, and they were very keen for us not to make any any mess on their beautiful green. So we put some boards down and um, uh, used that uh, very efficiently uh, on that site. This particular rig is very um, well, is also used on the railways. It comes in just under a ton, so we're able to put that on trolleys and push that by hand. So again, it makes our um, clients very happy because they don't need additional plant to bring that to site, and we can very um, we can man manhandle that to the locations that our clients require. Um, so wind sample rig. Um, how this works is we have a hydraulic uh, engine and this drives a large hammer inside this cage here. The hammer comes up and down and, and hits the window sample uh, tubes here. This forces them into the ground. They are then using the hydraulics. We then extract the um, tube out of the ground. We then break it down and we've got a beautiful sample of what's in the ground. And that's generally done in meter segments. Um, but we can do larger um, So we started, uh, yeah, this can get down to, I would say seven or eight meters, depending on the ground conditions. And then we can put some probes to get to 10-ish meters in the right ground conditions. With our window sample rigs, um, we have actually got some electric ones so we can work inside buildings. And we can also take the mast off so we can have the mast working independently from the hydraulic power pack. Um, so we can keep that outside the building so we're not polluting the atmosphere inside um, and then have a set of controls that so we're able to control the, the weight inside this cage that goes into the sample, into the sample tubes. So another form of Ground investigation is um, concrete coring. Um, this is a very uh, useful tool for getting um, into the back of uh, railway bridges or um, concrete walls, retaining walls. Um, this particular unit is actually a hydraulic unit. Um, and this is very helpful on a railway shift because sometimes you're working outside and um, you don't really want an electric drill um, when it's raining rather heavily. Um, so again, this is a, a, a fantastic bit of kit. And then once we've drilled a hole, we can then get samples from behind the wall, and put a hand shear vein through the back of it and take some strength measurements from the back of that. Um, some of our clients have requested us work in some quite remote areas um, that have got uh, very low ground bearing pressure or very soft grounds. Um, so we have um, invested in two crawler rigs that have a two PSI footprint. Um, one of them has got a Kamakio um, on the back of it so we can do rotary drilling. Um, and then the second vehicle will act as a support vehicle. And on this particular one, obviously we've got a compressor, but this can also carry additional tools um, so we can get to some quite remote locations safely and um, meet our clients' expectations. So this is generally for wind farm investigations, that sort of thing. Trial pitting is um, a tried and tested um, method uh, for all ground investigation contractors. And it's very uh, fast, it's relatively cheap, and we can get a lot of samples um, quite quickly. Um, this particular site was actually up in Wilver, and it was actually an asbestos um, sort of, well, there was asbestos in the ground. So uh, it was quite challenging to, to dig this because we had to be in full um, sort of PPE. It was very hot that summer. And um, yeah, it was, it was hard work, but it was, it was fine. And we had to follow those um, health and safety procedures to ensure that uh, everybody was safe on site. So here we are uh, taking 
taking the spoil out, putting it onto plastic sheeting, and then obviously once we've finished, or we take the samples, we um, can then put everything back in the hole. So another type of ground investigation is in situ testing. Um, on the left here, we've got a, a CBR frame set up and we're using the Land Rover to use that as a, as a reaction force into the ground. And we've got a plate load test in the top here and we've got a radioactive um, source and this is actually a nuclear density gauge. And um, so we can measure the density of a earthworks rather rapidly um, through the, uh, the whole of that uh, earthwork structure. Um, so another form of ground investigation is called static cone penetration testing or CPT for short. Um, we don't have any in-house but we generally use a um, company called in situ and they have rail mounted uh, rigs or they have um, different trucks for different environments. Um, this is a fantastic tool and it really complements all of the ground investigation tools that I've mentioned earlier. And this gives centimeter by centimeter detail uh, through the ground. So, but it doesn't give you the sample. So again, we all we need the intrusive investigation and this sort of done simultaneously so that we can um, have both together. Now as a little bit of a test uh, for everybody. Uh, I didn't mention this, but I am now. Um, so we get asked all the time to undertake um, trial pits in different areas. Um, this particular site, we were asked to do a trial pit on a concrete slab, which is never very good because it makes a lot of mess. Um, the client is very upset um, because the reinstatement is never up to their um, requirements. And even though we've done a fantastic job, it always is never going to go back the same. So this is a little, um, so a better place and a better thing to do, and this is what I would always request to the client, is that if we can, we use window sampling on the concrete slab, and then we do any of the trial pitting in the soft ground areas to the side. I appreciate sometimes it's unavoidable, but if we can, um, certainly we will, because to reinstate this costs a lot of money, time, and um, it's it's not a great deal of concrete that needs to go in there, but it needs to go off before anybody can drive over that. Um, so really trial pitting in this particular, on this particular site is not the best option. However, if we did window sampling on this particular site, uh, we would find that the window sample would not be able to get through these cobbles and boulders. So again, if we turned up with a window sample rig on this particular site, um, we wouldn't get very far. We'd dig our hand dug pit down to 1.2, um, and then we would almost come to a very um, stop, and we wouldn't be able to give the client the information that we needed. So um, on this particular site, we would need a JCB or excavator to come in and dig that pit. So we've got to look at the ground conditions uh, from the geological maps and from our death study information to make sure that we do turn up with the right kit. So going back to our BS5930 um, statement, we want to make best use of the client's budget and uh, for a very small additional cost to the ground investigation, we can look at groundwater and ground gas within that particular site. Um, this generally means putting in a 19 mil, a 50 mil or larger if required, bit of pipe in the ground. Um, that pipe could be slotted, it could have a piezo tip on the end and that can measure both gas and groundwater depending on where the groundwater is in the borehole. Um, a second um, type of installation is called magnetic extensometer and this can measure the slip of um, any, any um, slippage down a slope uh, and also we put an inclinometer in and this has a groove and we run a tool up and down the inclinometer and this can actually measure the um, point of where it's slipping and um, we've got to make sure that the borehole is actually deeper than the point of failure otherwise it's a waste of money um, but as we can see from here 
you should be able to see just it's about nine and a half meters so the point of failure is about nine and a half meters so any retaining structure that needs to be designed we need to go um, deeper than that point of failure so again this is an essential um, bit of kit and a really useful um, information for the design purpose so what do we do with all that data so all of the data from the site goes to our lab. We then give that um, schedule to our client. Our, it could be an engineer, and our engineer will then specify the testing that they require. And all that we ask everybody is to make sure that that testing laboratory has got a UCAS accreditation and um, for chemical testing or for soil testing. And we can do a vast array of different testing. So within our laboratory in Carlsford, we do have only the second uh, red laboratory in the country that I'm aware of. Um, this means that we can test hydrocarbons, asbestos contaminated material for materials testing. So we can test uh, in a safe environment and in, we can maybe potentially reuse that material rather than sending it off to landfill as long as it's obviously treated and capped. Um, so it's a very useful um, sort of a bit of plant. So when all of the information from the ground is logged by our engineers, we then undertake um, some drilling and some borehole logs using the driller's information and the engineering information. We combine the two together. Um, we can also put um, a, a visual log down the borehole as well. We can combine that with the uh, engineer's log. And we can then do a cross section through the site so we can get a very good um, summary of the ground conditions across a linear site or, a, or a, um, any sort of site you like at all. Um, we then can export that into a AGS so that our consultants can put that into any design packages that they require. Um, it's very important that our um, any of the rock um, that that's comes out the ground is recorded. So we've got a really good um, sort of almost rock studio. So we can take some great pictures of our rock that's coming out the ground. Um, and that just preserves a, a, a high quality record for our clients so that we can um, keep that as a, and it's easy to, to, to review and visit um, before any testing gets undertaken on any of that rock. I'm just gonna quickly do an overview of our products or projects that we've worked on. So this particular site is called Bradwell and here we, they're looking to put a new, well, the, the power station is coming to the end of its life and we're now looking or being asked to investigate a potential site for a new location and but there's a historic fault uh, in this area and what we don't want to do is obviously put a reactor over an existing fault just in case it react it activates and we have some issues uh, with a sort of Fukushima uh, type issue so um, so we need very very detailed analysis of the ground conditions so we're using our colleagues at RSK to do some geophysics across the ground to hopefully identify where this fault is. And it looks like we have got a little bit of an identification of, of a feature in the ground. So again, we would avoid that for any design of the power station. So this is, um, well, it's come to an end mostly, the Thames Tideway Tunnel. Um, so we are using our big rigs in, in and around London and uh, we're able to drill in some quite congested areas um, and we've gone down to 90 odd meters. So there's a lot of uh, logistics involved in getting our uh, rigs in these locations. So we also use window sampling on the railways, as I've said earlier, and this particular site uh, was a long way from any access point, but because we had the trolleys and we were able to push our drilling rig to the location, do our work and then um, get the the, the, the window sample back on the trolley and off-site. So um, 
yeah, we, we've done a huge amount of ground investigations on the railway. So, and lastly, um, structural soils have a really useful guide. It's called an engineer's quick reference guide. This is free to anybody who wants to download it. Um, we just, we're actually in the process of updating it. So um, you can download the version that we've got up there now. Um, but again, if you come back in a month's time or so, we should have a new version for you. Um, so please help yourself and uh, we'll be, um, it's, it's free for everybody. And unfortunately, obviously, I can't offer any questions or answers, but you're more than welcome to email me, ask at soils.co.uk if you have any queries, questions on this particular presentation or any other services that we may be able to offer. And uh, I just want to say thank you very much for listening and uh, we look forward to hearing from you in the near future. Thank you.